Happy music. Uh, hope everyone out there is doing okay, uh, getting by all right with all the craziness going on in the world. Um, so uh, just checking in, um, want to touch base and let you guys know how this is going to be working as far as this class goes. I am going to be posting work every other day as all you teachers are going to. Um, we are going to stick with our study of the prescribed works. As of right now, your IB music listening paper is on as scheduled. Um, so until we hear otherwise, we will proceed uh, with that in mind. One thing I am going to change, though, is that I am going to shift over to studying the Haydn score um, rather than the Rachmaninoff. Since the Rachmaninoff is a little trickier, I'm going to wait and save that um, until hopefully uh, we are back together in person again because that one's a little easier to do um, face to face. The Haydn, um, I think you guys could mostly manage pretty independently. So um, we'll do some kind of little mini guided lessons here. Um, I'll do kind of a short mini lesson um, video here on YouTube. I'll probably get like a million likes. Um, and then I'll give you um, you know simple little tasks to kind of follow up from there um, to again best prepare you um, to uh, to deal with uh, Haydn's 94th Symphony as one of your two prescribed works. Um, so with that said, I'm going to get right into it. Like I said, um, for uh, the first couple of days, um, I'll give you um, you know like a mini lesson here on the video, and then I'll I'll attach a brief assignment with questions or whatever um, that pertains to what we did in class or in class today. Um, so, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. Um, put your phone away, Liam. Thank you. All right. So, um, since we're doing virtual classrooms right now, everything is very high tech. Um, I'm going to use my super high tech board over here, which is my two year old son's chalkboard. And we're going to talk about the form of a classical symphony. Because remember, our prescribed work is by. Joseph Haydn. Okay, now let me just add to this guy's quick timeout. I will ask you to please take notes on this. I know it seems kind of silly and kind of weird, um, but that's the best way for you to actually you know, reinforce what you are learning here. I know it's not ideal, but we'll make it work best as we do. So treat this as if this were a regular classroom. Ignore most of what I say, but if you see me write something down, you write it down too. So the prescribed work we're dealing with is Haydn's 94th symphony which was a group of one of a group of symphonies called his london symphonies um not that it's terribly relevant but um as you were um saw in the reading today it was um it was written during his time living in london um so uh it doesn't really have a whole lot of significance for us except for one uh one way um as far as the form of the symphony goes which I'll get to momentarily, um, but really more trivial than anything else. So, as you probably remember from last year, um, a classical symphony, of course, we're a classical period here, has four movements, and the first movement is pretty much always in what's called sonata form. And that's going to be the basis of our work today. So, let me zoom out here, because it seems kind of weird without you being able to see me. This whole thing is kind of weird, but here we are. Um, so... Um, sonata form. Let's do some review because you probably haven't really thought much about it um, since you just covered it last year. If you have been thinking a lot about sonata form over the past year, um, you may need to go talk to a doctor about that. So, sonata form is basically a type of ternary form. What does ternary form mean again? No one? All right. Remember, ternary form, guys, is A, B, A form. It's not a form, it's A, B, A form, but with a few more kind of wrinkles thrown in. So, to review the main parts, it's not a form. The first A section is called the... Thank you, Zach. The exposition. Uh, Ryan, what's the B section called? Development. You guys are on fire today. And then return to the A section, Jody Ann. Perfect. The recap, or more formally, the recapitulation. Don't know if I spelled that right. Okay, so that's three components of Sonata form. But again, it's more to it than just that. Simple ABA would 
just be able to call that ternary form, but there's more to it than that. So let me find the eraser that my child threw somewhere. All right, I'm prepared. So to go into a little more detail, of sonata form. In the exposition, we have an introduction. Now, this is um, why I mentioned really the only thing you need to know about the fact that this is one of Haydn's London symphonies is that a little kind of signature he put on all of his London symphonies was having a slow introduction before the fast music actually starts. So that's how you can always tell a Haydn London symphony the slow introduction, enjoy that useless trivia. Now, after the introduction, the music gets going. There's a primary theme, which, as you expect, is going to be in the tonic key. After the primary theme, we usually have a little other section. You can call it a bridge, call it a transition, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. Then, so that's called theme one, then we have theme two. Now the important thing about theme two, and what makes it easier to find, is that it's always going to modulate to the dominant. So if we're in C major, theme one will be in C major, theme two would modulate to where, Corbin? G major, thank you. All right, so that's what the exposition section looks like. Now, the development section is the opportunity for the composer to take some of this material, theme one and theme two, and, well, develop it. Modulations, fragmentations, all things we talked about over the years together. That's the development section, and then after that is the recap. Now the recap will look basically the same, right? It's called the recap for a reason. However, important change is that theme two in the recap is no longer in the dominant, but it will stay in the tonic. That's really kind of the big change going from the exposition to the recap is that theme two this time will stay in the tonic rather than modulating and the recap will typically end with a nice exciting coda kind of wrap up the movement uh, again usually the first movement of the symphony. Okay so in a nutshell that's what sonata form is again this hopefully is uh, not new to you and ringing some bells um, from your memory of the classical period for last year. Okay now um, here's what I'm going to ask you guys to do. I'm going to attach to this classroom posting a uh, recording of the uh, 94th Symphony of Haydn um, with the score attached to it. So you can kind of follow along uh, while you listen. Remember, for the listening paper, this part of the test is only based on the written score, but I like having you actually analyze the music first because I think it helps to put everything into context a little bit better. So, your assignment for today is to listen to the first movement of the uh, Haydn 94th Symphony. It's about the first eight and a half minutes or so of the recording. And I want you to mark off the time of every event that you can. So what time? Our old kind of form listening maps, right? But this time you know what the form is. Now you've got to fill in what times, okay? So obviously introduction is going to be at 001. Then when the tempo picks up, that's going to be theme one, all right? Then from there, it's going to be a little bit tougher to figure out, but you want to try to hear when the theme changes. Um, one thing I did forget to mention before I go on, which will help you, the entire exposition section will get repeated. So that's usually a really easy way to know where the exposition begins and ends, because that whole thing will be repeated. So I want you to find all those sections, tell me where the middle development section is, and again, go to the recap, tell me theme one and theme two again. Uh, you can just write that all out on a Google Doc and submit that to me. And then uh, once we do that, we'll, we'll move on with our analysis from there. And then uh, we'll take a look and think about uh, how this format's working out. Obviously, as you know, any questions or thoughts, um, feel free to shoot me an email along the way. Like I said before, um, I know there's not an ideal way to, uh, to run class, but we're trying to make do as best we can. Um, like I said, we're preparing as if the uh, listening paper is going on a scheduled IB has not said anything's changing as far as they're concerned. So uh, we're, we're moving forward, um, starting the music and being as prepared as we can be. Um, so that's it. Any questions, again, shoot me an email. But um, over the next two days, please do that little listening map for movement one. Again, I'll post the link right below this video. And um, like and subscribe.